Okay, so if we're gonna talk about the pelvic floor, we can't really exclude it from the pelvis, right? Thus its name. And when we look at the pelvis, this huge area of the body that's primarily bone and connective tissue, uh, we gotta remember that the pelvis is a girdle. And if we remember from hundreds of years ago, a girdle was something that people wore that was strung tight to create support and lift, support and lift. And go figure, that's exactly what the pelvic floor does. So, how does it do that? Well, everything that attaches to the pelvis, downstream and upstream from our extremities to our spine is really contingent on this foundation called the pelvis. And so we know a few things to be true about the pelvis. First of all, it's critical for the stability of the entire human body. And interestingly, when we look at the foot and the big toe, they have a huge connection, a huge phone line. Second of all, because of that stability, it empowers mobility. In other words, if we don't have good stability in the pelvis and the pelvic floor, then we won't have good mobility in areas like our lumbar spine, our hips, and so forth. And then finally, if we have that mobility and stability, it really creates the potential for power, whether that's strength, speed, endurance, whatever it is. So if we don't put this thing in the, right in the heart and the guts of our program, then we find that everything else tends to either A, not fulfill its potential, or B, we get hurt. Now, when we look at the pelvis, three things come to mind for me every time. Number one, I need to actually restore the slide and glide of the tissues. We sit down all day. When we sit down all day, the water gets pushed out and we get dehydrated. When our tissues get dehydrated, they get stuck together like glue. And then we stand up and we try to stretch and mobilize. And more often than not, not only do we not get that mobility and flexibility, we create little micro tears. So in a little program that we've put together here, just four movements, the first thing we're gonna do is hydrate the tissue which is why you're gonna see me laying down, getting into that deep inner medial groin, right up on the pelvis, and let the power bank flush it with lots of fluid and blood. So number one, let's hydrate that sponge. Once we've restored that slide and glide, we need to create that mobility. Can we get that optimal length, not only in the muscles, but also the connective tissues and the joints? So we go from a kind of release technique to a restore technique, we go from hydrating to creating active mobility. You're gonna see me face down, driving my pelvis forward and back, whilst one hip goes down, one hip goes out and rotates. This is a great way of making sure that our pelvis is rocking with rhythm and timing. If we don't have that, all bets are off. Once I've created that hydration and mobility, well now I need to activate. So you're gonna see a couple of techniques with, that are designed to make sure that we not only turn on the pelvic floor and all the muscles that insert into it, like our abdominals, our adductors, which are crucial, but we've got to connect it to the big toe and the foot, and maybe most importantly, breath. That pelvic floor is connected to the diaphragm. If we're not breathing right, we're not moving right. So, where breath goes, motion follows. So the next two techniques you're gonna see me move in in various directions, reaching hands, but the whole time I'm driving my big toe into the ground to create force up, and I'm breathing to create force down. That's a really powerful technique that you can do with any movement to make sure you're turning on not only your pelvic floor, but the diaphragm, the big toe, and everything else that connects to it.